From someone who was born on a Virgo full moon to all of us as we navigate a full moon in Virgo, here's what you need to know about the week of astrology that you are stepping into. Hi, all. my name is Haley Comet and welcome to Just a Magic Monday, particularly your Magic Monday astrological forecast for the week of February 19th to February 25th, 2024, where we are breaking down just as we do every single week, no matter where it is that I am located on this wide and wonderful planet, what the planets above us are up to, and furthermore, how you will feel their effects threaded within your daily life, at work, at school, within your family, within your relationship. And beyond just letting you know what you can expect within your weekly horoscope, here on Magic Monday, we strive to empower you with ways that you can co-create with the cosmos in order to flow in synchrony with the cosmic currents rather than swim your way upstream. It's Pisces season after all. And this week, as we're swimming in the cosmic currents as we're apt to do in Pisces season, it's important to know that you can't take the beauty of the ocean without the sting of the salt water. <laughs> It's important to honor that things can be mostly good, but still have some bad sprinkled in there and vice versa. Things can be mostly bad, but also have a lesson or something good sprinkled in there as well. Things are so rarely in life, all good nor all bad. Oftentimes it's a mix of both. And sometimes there can be complicated emotions embodied. Think of a graduation party where it's a celebratory event. It's jubilant, it's exciting. You're moving into this new chapter of your life but you're also having to be honest around, wow, okay, that chapter's over and time's going by. You have to acknowledge some harsh truths. It's mostly good, it's mostly jubilant and exciting, but there's also threads of having to deal with some more dense energy. That's what this week's Virgo full moon feels like because the full moon in Virgo, it trines Jupiter. So this is expansive, celebratory, good feelings abound. But also, with the opposition to Saturn, we're having to look something squarely within the face. We're having to face some harsh realities. Things can be mostly good. We could be celebrating this win. We could be celebrating this graduation. We could be celebrating this triumph. But we're also being asked to acknowledge some less fun arenas of our life. We're being asked to be very honest with ourselves. Because when we boil down Jupiter, Jupiter is the planet of growth. And when we boil down Saturn, Saturn is the planet of restriction. They may feel like opposites, but so often we don't get the Jupiter without the Saturn. We don't get the growth without being honest with ourselves about where it is that we can improve. We don't get the celebration until after a lot of labor has been transformed. We don't get the celebration of a birthday party without also acknowledging the harsh reality around, wow, Another year has gone by and I have to face what that means for me. And so there can be something that comes to a head this week that you have complicated emotions about. You have a really honest conversation where you have to look at something square in the face, but it leads you in your relationship to a trajectory of growth. You receive some harsh feedback at work, but you know it's actually making you better because now you have the tools of how it is that you can grow and move forward. You feel this rush of satisfaction around a job well done, but also with the opposite to Saturn, you're also attuned to the ways that you could do better. And so there could be some complicated emotions that you are swimming in this week. I mean, it's Pisces season, we're feeling everything. We're feeling the highest vibration of that triumph with also the deepest sadness of what this triumph or this culmination or this feedback truly means within the trajectory of our life. We're feeling everything intensely and we're feeling mixed emotions intensely. But what I can say is this Virgo full moon, Mercury entering Pisces, Venus conjoining Mars, Venus square Jupiter. It's making for an interesting week of astrology, but jump on in. I promise the waters are fine. <laughs> and here on Magic Monday, we'll break down everything that you need to know, how it is that you can plan and align yourself to these energies. We all know the energy of Virgo likes to have a plan. So that's what we're breaking down within this week. Before we dive in though, take a step inside my cosmic cafe. Let me know what you are sipping on to start your week. I'm drinking this exclusive blend rose drink that I got at the 7-Eleven here in Thailand. And I need to be so honest with you. It's in English, clearly. I could have investigated and read the label more deeply, but of course I was just enticed by the flowers and the teapots and all the pretty imagery and the talk of rose. I grabbed it right away. Let that be a warning for us all with Mercury entering Pisces. Sometimes it is important to check the facts and the figures and the details because from the label, I was enticed. 
I thought this was gonna be a rose drink as advertised, but it's very subtly rose. And I get it, a lot of people find floral taste very overpowering. I love the taste of rose and lavender, but I get it's not for everybody. But I barely taste any rose in this. I just taste a lot of fruit. And what's even odder about it is that every time I sipped, I taste a different fruit. Like my first sip, I tasted raspberry juice. And now I'm tasting grape. <laughs> But I might just be tasting grape because of last week's Magic Monday. I had a drink that turned out to be grape juice, so maybe that's just top of mind, fresh in my memory. But no, I really taste grape. But yeah, it's clearly written here. I did not read this at the 7-Eleven. White grape, strawberry, red grape, apple, raspberry, cherry, black currant. Where's the rose? Where's the rose? Where's the rose? Concentrate rose flavor, okay. I don't know, I feel a little duped. I think the energy of the Virgo full moon is asking us to look the truth, square in the face, investigate, read the details, don't succumb to the energy of Mercury and Pisces, just going off the vibe <laughs> and the feelings of things. Sometimes we need to turn over the label and read everything that is within. So yeah, I have complicated emotions about this rose drink, which I guess is on brand for the Virgo full moon, trining Jupiter and opposing Saturn. It's not bad, but it's not good either. <laughs> But alas, let me know what you are sipping on today, if you have mixed emotions around it. I'm going to move into a brief travel update. If you are not interested in that, go ahead and jump to the next timestamp, five check of the week to go right to the astrology, no worries at all. But I just wanted to say that I am in a new location now. I'm on a new island and I was so sad leaving the last island that I was at. I loved it so much. I was staying at this cottage right on the beach. So every single morning when I would wake up at three or four, because I'm still really jet lagged. I would just hear the waves crashing on the shore, just enticing me like, Haley, get in the water. And every single day I would tell myself, Haley, stay out of the ocean today. All the salt water is drying out your hair. But every morning I would just hear the ocean calling me in and I just could not resist. I would start every day running on the beach and then at the end, jump in the water. Ah, it was just the most heavenly way to start the day. Then I would walk to my favorite fruit stand and grab a fruit shake and some fruit. The fruit here in Thailand is absolutely divine. I truly think it is ruining me <laughs> from going back to the US and eating that fruit because it's making me realize how weird and bad our fruit is because here it's so fresh, it's so flavorful. So I've just been eating fruit every single day. It's so divine. But yeah, I'd get my mixed fruit shake and then I would go grab Americano from the Americano guy that I went to every day. I really had a nice, lovely routine there and I was sad to leave because I just loved it there so much. I loved the people. I got dialed in with the neighbors. I had a nice little routine going. And then it was time to leave. So I had complicated emotions of leaving the island that I loved so much and leaving the friends that I made on that island and leaving the gal I'd get fruit shakes from every morning and leaving the guy I'd get Americanos from every morning. I just loved that island so much. So I had complicated emotions, excited for the new island, but also grieving my experience at the past island because I loved it so much. And it wasn't so bad of a travel day, but it's just like a taxi to a ferry to a taxi lugging around all of my stuff. I mean, I'm traveling with my camera equipment, obviously, so it's quite an arduous task. And the new Airbnb, it's at the top of a lot of stairs and it's hot here. So it was just an arduous journey to get into this Airbnb. And I'm somebody, you can call it the Virgo moon, but I really like to get acclimated to my surroundings. I like to get my bearings when I'm somewhere new. I like to figure out, okay, where am I gonna get my fruit shake in the morning? <laughs> where can I go get a coffee? Where's a 7-Eleven? I like to unpack. I like to kind of ease into where it is that I am. But right when I arrived, it was sunset. And look at this view. I was like, I need to watch sunset here. So I put down my bags and I was like, okay, I'll just chill in the patio just for a second, take in the sunset sunset and then I'll get acclimated and dialed in. So I was very fresh to being here and I did not realize again that I was in the jungle with a capital J because I was just relaxing on the patio, journeying a little bit, taking in the sunset when all of a sudden I hear these animal noises and I look over and less than 20 feet from me is this family of monkeys. 
I have never seen monkeys in the wild. Keep in mind, I'm from San Diego. I do not just casually see monkeys within my day to day. I was so shook. And again, this is just upon getting to this island. I'm like, where am I? I am very up close and personal with nature here. There's so many birds, there's monkeys, there's geckos on the wall all of the time. I'm just here with the animal kingdom in the jungle. And to put it into astrological terms, I feel like the first place I was at, I was absolutely in my Pisces sun energy because I was just in the ocean all day, every day, on the beach, in my own world, just floating from place to place, listening to the ocean all day long. Whereas where I'm staying now, I feel like I'm more in my Virgo moon energy. I feel a lot more grounded being around all these trees. I feel a lot more anchored being so close to all of the animals that are around me. I feel like I'm really in my Virgo moon energy. It's a lot easier to work here, I will say, because it's more secluded. It's more quiet. I don't constantly hear the ocean like calling me saying, Haley, come swim in me. Come swim in me. Here, I'm finding it a lot easier to stay focused and to film, but I am having the best time in Thailand. I cannot wait to share more. But I just wanted to pop in with that brief update that I am now at a new island and I now have some new neighbors <laughs> of the primate variety. So if you are new to Magic Monday, hi, my name is Haley Comet, welcome. So Vibe Check of the Week is a segment that we do here on Magic Monday, where we essentially decode all of the energies that we will navigate this week from the full moon in Virgo to Venus squaring Jupiter, Venus conjoining Mars, Mercury entering Pisces. We essentially take all of those astrological energetics and compare them to a real life scenario. So that even if you're not sure what it means that Venus will align with Mars this week, you can tune into, oh, I've been in a situation like that or I know what that feels like to begin to clue into ways of how this energy will surface within your universe. So this week's astrology feels like the following scenario. We will say that you had this friend, Kate. You guys were family friends, so you grew up together, and Kate was always the popular one. She had this way about her where people just kind of orbited around her, like she was her own personal light source. You most certainly orbited around her. You were more of a shy, withdrawn person, and you just felt honored to be in her presence, to be her friend. You would have done anything for her, and you did a lot for her. Every time she asked you if she could copy your test, you said yes. Every time she asked if she could borrow something from your closet, even if that was what you were going to wear, you said yes. Every time she needed a ride somewhere, you said yes, you said yes, you said yes, because she's your best friend. One night, you're up late studying for a test and Kate calls you, hey, can you pick me up and take me here? And you tell her, gosh, Kate, I wish I could, but I'm studying. And Kate's silent on the other phone because this is not your dynamic. Kate asks you for things and you say yes, that's how you guys relate. And it's almost like Kate's having cognitive dissonance that you're telling her no right now. She can't believe it. And you're realizing, oh, were we really best friends? Do you love me or do you love what I do for you? And that experience makes you start to awaken to Kate. And you start to realize that you guys drift apart more and more the more that you start to say no. And now, five years later, you barely even hear from her. Until now, suddenly she's blowing up your phone. She has all these questions for you. How's work been going? I see you went here on your Instagram, how's that? How's your new relationship? Suddenly she's being super warm. She's reminding you of old inside jokes that the two of you shared and she's reminiscing about old memories and you want to just enjoy the rekindling of this friendship that at one point in time was so important to you but, but your intuition is signaling, mm, something feels off here. This is not like her to come in out of the blue and all of a sudden start pouring flattery and adoration on me and wanting to hang out when it's been crickets the past five years. But you snooze your intuition. You're like, listen, time has gone by. She must have changed as an individual. And so you say yes to going to the movies with her. And at the movies, she is buttering you up. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. She's metaphorically buttering you up by giving you all this praise and adoration and flattery. But she's also physically buttering you up by buying you popcorn and putting lots of butter on it. And she's reminding you about all your past memories. And she's also being very vulnerable with her own journey. She's actually had a hard go of it the past couple of years. Her career got derailed in 2020 because she worked in the hospitality industry. And she's just had such a hard time landing on her feet and finding a job. And her relationship fell apart. And you're really hearing her out and realizing, gosh, she must have matured a lot. And like all that she's gone through is why she's able to realize like that she was taking advantage of me and that wasn't a nice thing to do. Like she's clearly grown and she's willing to open up to me in this way. After this evening that you would consider a fun night, 
Kate is a good time. When you're hanging out with her, you feel like the only person in the world. But all of a sudden, she's driving you home and she says, oh, don't you work at blank? And you do work at blank. And you're like, yeah? And she's like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to mention this to you. Funny enough, I just put an application in there. Wouldn't that be funny if we worked together? And you're like, yeah, that'd be really funny. She says, oh, I just got an idea. What if when you go to work on Monday, you tell them that you heard that your hardworking friend applied and that you endorse me fully and maybe that would help me within my interview process. You know what a hard time I've been having finding a job and we've been friends forever. So I know you wouldn't mind doing this for me. And your heart sinks because all of a sudden it becomes perfectly clear and your intuition was trying to tell you that there were some ulterior motives here, but you snoozed your intuition and you bought into the way she was love bombing you and pouring all this flattery on you and you start to realize the truth becomes clear. Oh, that's why you wanna hang out. Oh, that's why you suddenly switched up is because you want me to help you. Again, the reason why this week's astrology feels like this scenario is because of the Virgo full moon. It feels good to help people out. And truly, it would feel good to be able to help her application get through. You know how hard the job market has been. You've been hearing about her struggles for the past couple of hours, how hard it's been for her. It feels good to help people. That's why we're on this planet, is to help other individuals to lighten their load. So within this week's astrology, there could be some really gratifying moments around really being able to bask in the effects of the service that you performed or the good job that you did getting an email from a client where your work has touched them profoundly or being able to volunteer at a soup kitchen and just seeing people being fed and nourished it's good to help it's good to serve that's why we are here is to help one another and to connect but you have complicated emotions about it. While it feels good to help people out and Kate is a family friend, you do want her to find a job. Being in job insecurity is the worst, but you have these weird emotions around it because it was presented to you as though it had just popped in her mind and it was this crazy coincidence, but you realize that this was all strategic. This was all strategic. The pouring of flattery on you, suddenly being so interested in pursuing a friendship with you, it was all done with the intention of asking you this very question. What is that? Um, it's not the monkeys, I'll tell you that. I don't know what that was. We're, oh, okay. <laughs> We're just gonna carry on. What goes down in the jungle, guys? I'm lost. I am so lost. But alas, you can't help but have some weird emotions around it because she was being a bit dishonest. And listen, with Mercury entering its fall of Pisces, we have to be a little bit more on guard for people trying to deceive us with their words, whether it's what they say or what they don't say. Both are lies. With Mercury and Pisces, I'm not saying everybody with this placement are liars, but what I will say is collectively, we could be a little bit more subject to bend the truth or to happen to mention at the very end, oh, I put in the application at your job. Since we're hanging out and we're such dear friends, would you mind doing this for me? With Mercury entering Pisces, people can be using their words to sell you a dream. But what I also wanna bring forward about this vibe check is that your intuition told you, you had a feeling, you had a feeling. And it's Pisces season, we're all intuitive. People who call themselves intuitives simply know to trust it implicitly, but we all are intuitive. We are all tapped in to universal source energy. And you had a feeling, you had a gut hunch that something was amiss. Because certainly, yes, Mercury is not dignified in Pisces, but it does have a superpower. Because a lot of what communication is, is beyond the words, the words that are said. It's also around the vibe, it's around the energetic. And words, it's a little bit easier to say this and not say this. Vibe's a lot harder to fake. So if you get a gut instinct, even if it doesn't make sense at the time, trust it. Mercury and Pisces can struggle when delivering communication in a very straight, linear way, but it can be very gifted in reading into the subtext of what's being said and what's not being said and what your vibe is and, and what your intuition is saying. And that's gonna be an important superpower as you navigate this week because we do have Venus aligned with Mars and then Venus squaring Jupiter over the weekend. Mars will square Jupiter next week. 
And with these two gathered together, the two passion planets, Venus being the planet of love and of charm and of charisma, and Mars being the planet of how it is that we get what it is that we want, we are killing them with kindness, so to speak. We're getting what it is that we want, that's Mars, with Venus as their weaponry around being sweet, around laying it on thick, especially with the square to Jupiter, right? Being a little excessive. You were like, oh my gosh, Kate, you've been talking for 20 minutes about how I'm so beautiful and successful and talented. It's a little much. <laughs> and just as Mars is being influenced by Venus being there, so how it is that we're getting what it is that we want is with beauty or with money. There's other manifestations that we'll talk about. Venus is also being affected by Mars. So it's like, to you, you saw this individual as the love, as the relationship, but to her, she saw it as a bargaining chip, as, oh, this is something that I can use to get what it is that I want. I want this job so I can leverage your friendship in order to get there. And so with Venus Mars, there definitely is an energy of passion erupting in the middle of the week, but we just have to be discerning around pe where people are using your good heart or your generosity simply as a bargaining chip or a way to get what it is that they want. Trust your intuition. With this full moon trining Jupiter, yes, it feels good to help people out and to do a favor, but the option to Saturn, it's an important reminder that givers must have limits because takers have none. And it's not fair for you to constantly be giving and giving and giving, especially when you start to realize that it's not reciprocal, that it's not a fair energetic exchange. It feels good to give. We're here to help people out, but it's not healthy nor sustainable to give and give and give and give until you feel like an empty vessel, until you feel like you're being constantly taken advantage of, until you feel like your kindness is something to be used and abused over and over and over again. That is not the sort of giving that feels good. So it's going to be important to use discernment this week. Use both the discernment of the Virgo full moon addressing the facts and the figures of the situation while also honoring the wisdom from Sun and Mercury being in Pisces around what's my vibe on this? How does this feel? So we'll be talking about this energy so much more in depth in our day-by-day -day analysis. I just have some quick notes before we dive in. First being, feel free to adjust the playback speed. You could speed me up. You could slow me down by hitting the gear icon to align my rate of speaking with your rate of processing. I also want to let you know there are timestamps below should you want to jump to a particular day or jump back to a particular day. The time zone that I will use throughout the course of this video is PST. So please adjust your time zone if you are located elsewhere in the world world as I currently am. I'm in Thailand, but I just thought we would keep it as PST to have at least some continuity within Magic Monday, even though the backdrop keeps changing. And without further ado, let's go ahead and take it into the horoscope for Monday, February 19th. On Monday, February 19th, happy Monday, happy moon day. It's a very moony Monday at that, as the moon will be transiting its domicile of cancer all day long, which draws our awareness to our home, to our room to the past, to nostalgia. This is the part of the vibe check where Kate was reminding you of your shared history together. Remember this inside joke? Remember this memory? And with the energy of the sun now being in Pisces and the moon in Cancer, we are feeling every emotion dialed up. And like I said about the building full moon, is that this is a full moon that's a bit of a mixed bag. There's some positive feelings embodied around it feels good to reconnect with this friend, it feels good to be able to help a friend out, but there's also some harsh truths to also face within this dynamic around, oh, Kate's trying to take advantage of me again. That makes me see Kate very clearly again. There was a mixed bag. And with so much of the cosmos and water currently, we're feeling all those mixed bag emotions quite intensely. And maybe this isn't showing up for you in terms of a friendship like this. Maybe this is showing up for you around, there's a mixed bag around certain things that are happening within your life. You're changing jobs. You're excited about where things are going, but you're also grieving what you're saying goodbye to. You're going through a breakup. You're excited to get back to who it is that you are and living and designing your own life, but you're also grieving that connection. You're you're moving, so excited to explore this new city, but you're also saying goodbye to a particular chapter. So many things in life are bittersweet. And with the energy of the sun in Pisces and the moon in Cancer, we're feeling all of that as though somebody came up to our emotional volume meter and turned it up all the way. We're feeling all of the feels. And it's so narrow-sighted to say that it's only just sadness. Like with this, having a song come on shuffle that reminds you so strongly of eighth grade and creates this mixed bag of emotions of all that you went through at that time. Seeing an older gentleman cross the street and starting to burst into tears because you're wondering, why are you by yourself? Why is nobody helping you cross the street? Or watching a TikTok 
talk on puppies and wanting to cry because they're so cute. We're just feeling everything. It's not just our stuff, it's other people's stuff as well. And that's why it's important to be discerning because you were being genuine when Kate was opening up to you and sharing about her trials and tribulations. You were feeling for her. You were deeply in that empathetic energy. God, gosh, that would suck so much to have your entire industry shift overnight because of what it is that we all went through in 2020. Or gosh, I feel so bad. I know you were so passionate about that industry. You felt so deeply for her and you were very sincere in your feeling deeply for her. But from Kate's perspective, she was eliciting that emotion intentionally. She wanted you to feel bad for her. She wanted to sell you on the sob story. Maybe it was true, maybe it was not, but she wanted to purposefully allow you to feel bad for her so that you would be more apt to say yes to her favor that she was going to ask you. And at the end of interactions like that, when you realize that you are the only one being sincere, it leaves a funky taste in your mouth because you can hold two things at once. You can feel horrible about what someone went through and not want suffering for everyone, but also have some complicated emotions around, well, gosh, I feel really bad for you, but where were you these past five years? I went through things and you were nowhere to be found. You had no interest in hanging out with me as soon as I said no to everything that you asked of me. So yes, I feel bad for you because you're a human being and soul to soul. I feel for what it is that you went through. But on the other hand, where was this energy? So just knowing that People have different manipulation techniques. And listen, I'm not saying you need to go into this week and look around and be like, everybody's trying to manipulate me and take advantage of me. Just saying, be discerning. And if somebody is laying it on thick, either with flattery or just like selling you on this sob story out of the blue, really check in and check in on your kindness, check in on your empathy to ensure it's not being taken advantage of. And I wanna be so clear within my verbiage. I am not saying not to be a kind person. I'm not saying to be closed off. I'm not saying everybody's trying to take advantage of you. I'm just saying it's important to use discernment so that you don't feel yucky about those sort of interactions, so that you don't feel like your kindness and your compassion is being used. There are people out there who truly deserve your kindness and your compassion. And so it's more so around using discerning around who is truly worthy of it and who values you, not just what it is that you can do for them. And with the energy of Cancer Moon and Pisces Sun, we're feeling things deeply. We're feeling for other people around the globe. We're feeling for our friends. We're feeling everything. And this can be artistic. This could be creative. This could be intuitive. But when you are in a more emotional state, you do not see the world clearly. And the thing about water element, okay, now that we have the sun in Pisces and the moon in Cancer, people think they can dump anything in water. If you go up to a river and you dump red Gatorade in it, what's the water going to do? It's going to absorb it because that's what water element does. It absorbs. That's why if you have strong water within your chart, people must just tell you personal things about their life all the time because you're able to absorb it and hold it. But the problem is then it becomes part of you. Now you're 99% water, but 1% red Gatorade. Now that person feels better because they dumped all their stuff on you and you're there holding it. It doesn't feel good when someone has poured all of their problems and all of their stuff in you and on you. It doesn't feel good when all of a sudden they're like, ah, I feel so much better and they just walk away. And you're like, hey, now I have all of that. Now I have to carry all of that and you don't care at all. It doesn't feel good. And it makes it so that you're less able to hold or to truly use that nurturing, that intuition, that care that you have, that you are gifted with for the right souls who will genuinely be able to be renewed by it and will genuinely renew you as well. So I'm not saying that you need to be jaded within this experience. I'm just saying it's important to stay tapped in because if you just keep absorbing and absorbing, letting people dump their red Gatorade, dump their problems and carve yourself into whichever shape, whatever container they need you to fit in, after a certain time, you will be less you, right? If we keep dumping the red Gatorade in there, that water will be 98% water, 97% water, and you'll turn into more of what it is that you're absorbing. We are here to help one another as human beings. I'm not saying not to help people. It's just important to use discernment around, no, you just want somewhere to dump that red Gatorade. You don't value the renewing quality of this water. You don't value what it is that I am. You just value what it is that you can get from me. And it's important to have discernment around that so that you filter that care and compassion, that intuition towards the right people. Even if you don't have water element within your chart, all of us collectively are moving through this energy and you have to use discernment. 
And so on Monday's astrology, the moon is actually making some really nice aspects. It's trining Saturn at 12.02, it sextiles Jupiter around 2 p.m. So yes, we can be feeling things more intensely, but Monday does feel like a more productive day when your intuition is actually an asset, right? Like even if you're at work and you don't work within an intuitive field, being able to really use your intuitive abilities in a meeting to make people feel valued and bring that home feeling or really connecting with the client and feeling into them energetically or, or at least getting your work done while listening to music and reminiscing on some happy memories. This energy is why Kate was pulling on your shared history because oftentimes when we're in that more nostalgic energy, we can start to remember the good times with this person around, oh gosh, me and Kate, yeah, we did do that thing and we did have that inside joke. That was so fun because that's the funny thing about memories is that we only remember the good. Isn't that funny how that works out? But the moment that Kate had peppered in, oh, don't you work here? Wouldn't it be funny if you just told them that I'd be a great candidate, that they should hire me immediately? Don't you think that would be a good idea? The moment she pulled that, then all of a sudden all of those other memories came in like, oh yeah, like that one time that you ditched me at lunch because I wouldn't let you copy for my homework. Oh yeah, that reminds me of this one time that you ditched me to go hang out with the boys when they didn't want me to go. Like you, you block a lot of that off, especially if someone is eliciting all those positive emotions. Remember this? Remember this inside joke? Or like if an ex comes back in talking to you about this and that and the third, you might be wondering like, why did we break up? Up. I just remember this memory and this memory. It's important that when these memories get activated, understanding that you are viewing them through rose colored glasses, my love. That is not literally how it went down. And the gift of being in Pisces season is that we have this ability to romanticize our life, to see the best in everybody, can make life feel a little bit like a movie. But it's also important to know that movies are tightly shot and edited and scripted bits of life. Life is not like a movie and there might be a lot of valuable data that is on the cutting room floor <laughs> from the experience with that individual. So you might be thinking back and in the slideshow around, gosh, it was so fun when we went on vacation together that one time. And when we had this inside joke, really dig deep. Think about the film that's lying on the cutting room floor. Oh, remember that fight we had? Remember that time that they ditched me? Remember that? With Pisces season, we're less apt to focus on that, especially with the Cancer Moon. We're reminiscing, that's such a nice memory. You're, you're part of my family, you're my family friend, kind of pulling on our heartstrings. And it's just so important. Your heart is too beautiful and too pure of a thing to be taken advantage of, which is why you have to be diligent in the protection of your sensitive, soft heart. Like when we think of cancer energy, yes, it's sweet, it's soft, it's kind, it's nostalgic, but my love, cancer is the crap. They've got that exoskeleton to protect their inside and you must have the same or else your sweetness will be corrupted. Your waters will be turned into red Gatorade. <laughs> and I don't have a beef with red Gatorade. I don't know why that's always the example I give with that analogy, but you will be fundamentally less of what it is that you are if you allow everybody to have access to it all of the time or do whatever it is that they want with your kindness, with your heart, with your soul, you will become less of who it is that you are, which is why you must have boundaries over your sweetness, over your kindness, over your softness. You cannot allow every single person to have access to you and to your kindness, to your love, to your emotional intelligence, especially if they're not showing you the same in return. Just because it feels good to give does not mean you need to give to your own detriment until you are less of who it is that you are here to be. You must be the protector of your own softness, of your own sweetness. You must be so diligent around cultivating that fortress around your kindness. And I know it's such a challenging lesson to learn and you can feel like this world isn't built for someone like you who feels as deeply as you do, who cares about things as deeply as you do. And I'll be honest with you, it's a harsh world, which is why you have to be diligent about protecting that inside. It's not allowing yourself to be jaded and hard and corrupted. It's just about really stepping into that role around 
constructing a fortress around that part of you. Do not let this world change you from who it is that you are here to be. Your kindness, your compassion, your ability to feel things deeply, it is such a gift. But you as the carrier of those traits, of those qualities, you must be extra diligent about constructing a moat, <laughs> so to speak, around that energy, because you need it, okay? You need it, and this world needs it. The right people who will value it and amplify it and pour right back into you need it. And part of that fortress is yes, limiting people's access to you, but it's also doing the things that renew you, my love. That's what this moon in Cancer is asking for. Because on Monday, there's an energy around it's productive and sufficient, but with the energy of moon and Cancer, coming back to your home base, coming back to what soothes your soul, maybe you have to go to work or you have to handle the task, but coming back to your home base, whether that is your family or the activities that just anchor you within this experience that renew you, that flush out your water, right? Because every so often we have to take in things from our day. People angry customers will pour red Gatorade on us and what have you, which is why you have to step in that fortress around how you can renew and cleanse out your water, how you can you know, take a bath, dance to some music, write a poem, be intentional around cultivating your own inner world. This is a form of self-care with Pisces season, is having a very rich inner world. And with the moon in Cancer, being intentional about pouring into yourself, nourishing yourself so that you have the capacity to continue being what it is that you are and that you do not turn into red Gatorade just because a customer came in who's pouring red Gatorade on you, okay? That would be my advice for Monday. On Tuesday, February 20th, we may be feeling a little bit more sensitive in the morning time. Now, it's Pisces season. We're likely gonna be feeling sensitive the entirety of the season, but especially in the morning time because in the morning, the Cancer moon will square off with Chiron and Aries around 3.45 a.m. And this is the sort of sensitivity that pings at a sore spot. The reason why this situation with Kate was so upsetting that she was trying to get you to do her a favor again is because it brought at this old story that exists within you. The only reason people wanna be my friend is because what it is that I can do for them. Even if you've done so much work in the time that you've known Kate, you've built genuine friendships, you have this amazing relationship, you've built this incredible career, you've done well for yourself and you're an empowered individual, but part of her asking you for this favor reverts you back to you being 16, being shy and being under Kate's wing and only being good for what it is that you can do for that person. Even though you're so empowered within your life, that situation reverses you right back. It sounds like there's something on my patio. It sounds like there's an animal on my patio, but the blinds are closed. So, you know, what it is that we don't see? won't hurt us, and I think my door's locked. I don't think anything would open it. The monkeys, monkeys are really smart, so the monkeys might be able to open it. I locked the door, just in case, but alas. Even when you are so empowered, you've built this great life, there will be scenarios in your life that revert you back to a very wounded part of you. And you could experience that within your life around, you've done so much work on yourself, you've healed, you've grown, you're focused on your own journey, but there are still scenarios that bring you back to being that scared eight-year-old little girl. There's still scenarios where you feel like you're that 16-year-old who no one wanted to eat lunch with. There will be experience within your life that almost make you revert back. And it's not that you literally un do all of that work that you've done on yourself, but there's parts of you that can feel like that around, gosh, under all of the credentials and everything that I've built, I still feel so scared. I still feel so helpless. I still feel so taken advantage of, whatever the story is. And I don't want you to feel like that's a step backwards. That's natural that those old stories come out and it could be triggered by a similar theme. It could be triggered by something different entirely, but it's just important to know that you are not undoing all of that work that you've done just by feeling those emotions or just by reminding yourself of those old triggered pain points that exist within you. Feel it, heal it, and remind yourself, you don't live in the past any longer. You don't live there anymore. You're not that scared eight-year-old girl. You're not that 16-year-old at lunch with no one to sit with. You don't live in the past any longer. And it just feels like with Cancer Moon scoring Chiron, there's regret over the past. Some of you read tarot. I'm seeing five of cups within my mind's eye. There's regret. There's something that you wish would have gone down differently. You're thinking about your ex and you're thinking about all the good times. You are not seeing the bad times. Okay, let me tell you that right now. You're not remembering. We just don't see it, okay? We just don't see it. So don't buy into the fantasy too, too much. 
but there's some sort of regret over something that has transpired. And like I said about Cancer Moon, there can be a fixation to harbor onto the past, but you don't live there any longer. What's done is done. What happened, happened. And with the energy of the Pisces sun, we have to sink into that trust that all is unfolding as it's meant to, even if it's painful, even if it's so challenging to stomach at this time around, why didn't this relationship work out? Why did this friend do me so dirty? Why didn't I get this job? With the energy of Pisces sun, it's about feeling, even though this sucks and I hate it, I have to trust that it's all going to work out because what other choice do I have beyond just trusting that it's all going to work out? So feel what's coming up, but no, this is not the end of the story. There is a reason why I always make the vibe checks open-ended. I don't know if that frustrates anybody when I do that, when I don't give a clear resolution. Like, what did you do in the vibe check? Did you put in that endorsement for Kate or not? I leave that open-ended because life and astrology, it's ever evolving. We never really get a conclusion all wrapped up with a bow, right? Things are constantly unfurling and life is like that as well. We oftentimes don't get the disappointment and figure out exactly why it couldn't work out at that moment. Sometimes it takes years or decades to understand, oh, that rejection was such protection. Or Kate refusing to hang out with me after I stopped doing her little favors was such a blessing. It was such a blessing because it allowed me to see her true colors once and for all in high school and start my own life. Like sometimes things that are so painful in the moment, it is necessary for growth. It's kind of embedded within that Virgo full moon around there's some tough pills to swallow in this lifetime. But with the trine of Jupiter, we have to trust that that tough pill to swallow is going to be beneficial for us or that tough reality to take on is going to be conducive for our growth. And with the energy of the Cancer Moon squaring Chiron and then sextiling Uranus right after, it's almost like that vibe right when Kate makes this proposition around, you should just do this. It's almost like you have this choice. You're gonna choose what you've chosen in the past, which is sure, no problem, Kate, like your wish is my command. Let me just bend over backwards for you. Or you can choose Use a new approach with the sextile to Uranus. So if there is a familial old trigger that gets activated where an ex suddenly wants another chance and you typically give them another chance or your boss asks you to stay late and do another task again or something happens where you typically would go one way, there's an opportunity to take another course of action around what would it look like to say no? Or what would it look like to enact a boundary? What would it look like to say that I'm busy? What would it look like if I chose a new path rather than the path that has continually led me feeling hurt and wounded and taken advantage of? It's just a sextile, so it's not like this major aspect that's embedded within our week. But I will say on Tuesday, there's an opportunity where maybe you're reminiscing on the past, you're thinking about woulda, shoulda, coulda, but with the sextile to Uranus and Taurus, it's like, well, it wasn't. It's like, okay, I'm bored with the past. I've reminisced over the same scenario over and over and over. Let's try something new. Let's do something new. My mentor is a Pisces. I talk about him quite a bit, but he basically navigates his life as though everything is a movie. And he says he knows he needs to change something up within his life when he realizes that the movie of his life that the audience is watching is getting pretty boring. He's like, that's when I need to change something up. If the audience of my life is watching me go back to my same ex again for the sixth time, or they're watching me let my boss take advantage of me again for the seventh time, or they're letting me do this and that, for the 10th time, even though it leads to pain every single time, the audience is gonna get a little bored with the movie. Sometimes we gotta shake things up, especially if we know, okay, going down this path, it leads to pain, it leads to regret, it leads to me feeling sorry for myself, it leads to me take, feeling taken advantage of. What if I tried something different? Would I get some different data? I give it a different result? I don't know until I try. And at least the moviegoers will be somewhat amused, right? And the energy is built upon by the Cancer Moon trining Neptune. So Neptune is the planet astrology that governs screens, mirrors, cameras. You know, it's Pisces season. Everything is much more <sighs> and dramatic and romanticized during Pisces season. So it's all good to feel your emotions deeply. It's all good to romanticize them deeply. It's all good to look at your life as though it's a movie. But it's also important to remember, as I said earlier, there's lots of footage on the cut room floor and the Pisces sun isn't seeing it, Cancer moon trining Neptune and Pisces isn't seeing it. It's being taken in by the movie of what's making it into the dramatic montage. It's not remembering that five other reunions with your ex were cut out of the movie. Because you know, it's such a beautiful thing to romanticize people and places and to see the best in people, but not to the detriment of your own well-being and not to the point of keeping yourself suspended in fantasy. That is something important to keep in mind with Pisces season is to come back down to earth every so often and not allow ourselves to build people up or situations up to be something that they are not. 
Like on that movie theater date, you were almost like envisioning you and Kate and you're like, we're back together like the old times and I love our friendship and this is all so good. And she is such a sweet person. You built her up on this pedestal. And then when she reminded you who she really was, the fantasy was over, the jig was up. You had cast her in a movie for a role that she was not playing. You cast her for the role around the bestie who were reuniting and we're gonna be the best friends ever. That's not the role she's playing in the movie. She's making it clear what her role is. She is the bestie where you bend over backwards and you do whatever it is that she needs when it's convenient for her. And then as soon as she gets what she wants, she disappears. That's the role that she is cast in your movie. But you had a different role slated and it's so easy to project what we want people to be. So just being conscious of where you are putting people in roles within your movie of roles that they will not act well in because that's not who it is that they are. Kate is not going to be the best friend who you guys restart this magnificent friendship. She doesn't have the capacity for that. She's playing a much different role in your movie and you need to step out what you had slated her for or what you had romanticized her as being. You have to get real with yourself. That's the energy of this Pisces sun and this Virgo moon. And it's a balance. It's helpful to go into fantasy every so often, but you gotta come back down to earth. You gotta be able to believe who people are when they show you. Believe what is in front of you rather than the vision that you've concocted. And just being cautious of that on dates. Even when you go to view properties, like falling in love with the Zillow pics and not falling in love with what is right in front of you, or jobs, romanticizing it to be something that it's not. It's such a gift to romanticize life. I had highlighted my mentor as a Pisces, hence why he views things as a movie. It makes life a lot more magical. We feel things more deeply. Things get more dramatic. It gets more fun. I'm not saying you can't you know live in fantasy every so often but if it's causing you pain if you're realizing this person is not playing the role within the movie that I had invested all this emotional and mental energy into you have to get real and and go off their actions and be like what would I cast this person as within my movie we've been talking a lot about friendship simply because we have this Aquarius stellium within the cosmos and I want to share that one of the best shifts that I ever made made when it came to my friendship, something that saved me so much heartache and frustration and resentment was being willing to recategorize the friendships within my world and stop imagining that every friend would be everything, the everything friend, that every friend I could turn to and would be there no matter what the time was, that every friend would be someone who was able to listen to my problems, but also go have fun with me and also be invested in this and help me with this and be accountable for this. Not every friend will be able to play every role. And I saved myself so much frustration when I realized that, when I realized, hey, this is not a friend that I can go to about personal matters. So let me just categorize them as, this is a friend that I go out and I play tennis with. This is my tennis friend and we have a great time. We play tennis, we giggle, we chortle, and we go home. And I saved myself the frustration of trying to get this person to care about my life and ask me questions about my life or care about what it is that I'm going through. They don't need to, they're my tennis friend and that's fine, I can have fun with them, we could talk about tennis, and that's the category that I'm gonna put them in because they clearly are not fit for the role of being my everything friend because they haven't asked me a single question about myself within the last six months. There are some friends that are your party friends. You can go have fun with them, but they probably won't be there the next morning to help you move out. It's important to be able to recategorize, to save yourself the heartache around, why is this person not showing up for me? Oh, because they're my going out friend. They're my astrology friend. They're my this friend. They're my that friend. They don't need to be all of the things. I'm projecting that they need to be all of these things. They're showing me they're just interested in being my fun friend. And I do think it's important to have friends who are there for you and not just there for the good times. But I do think it's important and it saves you a lot of heartache trying for somebody to be someone that they are not and that they have no interest in playing within your world. But it's just important to go by what people are showing you. Stop breaking your own heart thinking that people need to be behaving differently than they are or treating you differently than they are. They're showing you who they are. They're showing you the place that they have within your world. If you'll have them within the limited capacity that they're showing you, is that worth it to you within a friendship context? Only you can answer that. But it helps you the heartache around, why doesn't this person care? Why does this person just want to shop with me? Why doesn't this person show up for me? They might not be that particular role within your life. And you could ease up a lot of your own frustration by not getting disappointed every time that they show you who it is that they are and the role that they are. That's your shopping friend, my love. That's your tennis friend, my love. Not everybody is going to do all of the things and be all of the things for you all of the time. And you're going to break your own heart trying to have people be 
different than they are. They're showing you who they are. You can of course vocalize, hey, you're showing me this sort of energy. I would love if you were more interested in my personal life or weren't just there for the good times. But at a certain point, people are who they are. You can either take them as they are, recategorize them as they are, or let go of the friendship. That's really all we can do. So just something to play with in case anybody relates to that. But to a practical level on Tuesday, with the Cancer Moon trining Neptune, you might be doing the task, but you're romanticizing the task. So definitely find moments to make things a little bit more dramatic, right? To make things a little bit more of a movie moment. Like if you have to walk to the supermarket, why not play some music and pretend you're in a dramatic montage? If you're finishing up a report, why not listen to some music and act like you're cast in a chick flick and you're working at an advertising firm in the big city and you don't have time for love? Whatever the romanticizing that you want to do, whatever the movie that you are cast in, there's an energy around, yes, doing the task, showing up with the trying to Neptune, finding ways that you can make it a little bit more dreamy, a little bit more magical, a little bit more mystical. So on Wednesday, February 21st, I want to let you know firstly about an aspect that happens late Wednesday night, but you'll likely feel this tension building the entirety of the day. And that is that Venus and Mars align in Aquarius. To put it very simply, this is a very passionate burst of energy, particularly in whichever house holds Aquarius for you. We are getting this fierce desire and pursuit of what it is that we want and what it is that we value, whether that is money, whether that is love, whether that is sex, whether that is this job, we are being very fierce and very forward about what it is that we want. So much so that sometimes, especially when we consider how near Pluto is to this conjunction, there can be certain charges of at all costs. It's fair for me to use your love and adoration of me, Venus, to get what it is that I want. It's fair, it's at all costs. The ends justify the means. We talked a lot about that last week. There's shades of that interwoven here where people could be a little manipulative in order to get their needs met. And however that shows up, that could show up financially, right? Like getting to a salesperson who's telling you everything that you want to hear and telling you how this product is going to sell this, that, or the other, because they're just thinking of their commission at the end of it. So they will say whatever it is that they need in order to have their way with you, whatever that may be. Now, the lighter attribute of this energy is with Venus Mars, we could be feeling passionate. We could just be feeling more activated by life. This is giving lust for life energy where we're remembering what lights us up. We're remembering what makes us passionate. We're remembering what makes us fired up. We're feeling invigorated around pursuing a particular goal, whether that's love life related, whether that is financially related, pleasure related, whatever it is, we're feeling fired up around something. And it's good to be in the pursuit of something that you want. We tend to imagine as human beings that happiness would be if we were just on a beach all day long sipping margaritas. Listen, I told you about my experience at that last island. I was pretty much in the water 90% of my time there and I was happy as could be. But that's actually not where individuals rank consistently as the happiest. Like if I was probably there for another week, I would probably get a little bit bored towards the end there. People rank the highest in happiness and well-being when they are in the heartfelt pursuit of a goal that they have chosen for themselves. When they are working towards something that is of value to them, that's when we are ranked as the happiest. That's when people report the highest levels of well-being, is when they're moving towards something or getting closer to something that has meaning to them, that is valuable to them, that they are feeling invigorated by the challenge around getting better. Because whether you're a creative, whether you are an author, whether you are a boss, whatever it is, this Virgo full moon reminds you that for you to be the best, for you to improve, you have to embrace constructive criticism. You have to be able to look at ways that you could be doing better. You need to feel so hungry about moving towards being the best that you can possibly be and making use of the most potential that is within you that you are willing to do whatever it takes in that pursuit of growth and being able to flesh out all of that potential that exists within you. With the Venus Mars, there's this motivation around, it's time, I have too much potential in me to keep doubting myself. I need to move ferociously towards this goal. 
I will say with Mars, we could be feeling more energized. We could be feeling more passionate. We could be feeling more enlivened by the pursuit of our goals, even if they're challenging. Listen, Mars is down for a challenge. And so with the Venus Mars, we're enjoying the pursuit of being the best that we can be and of creating a life that's truly in the design of who it is that we are. This conjunction aligns in Aquarius. Your passion is how the universe speaks to you. Your passion is how the universe is whispering to you where it is that you can do the most good and create the most good for this planet. I know it's a really challenging time to be alive right now. I know it's incredibly dense and it's incredibly sorrowful just observing everything that is happening within the world. And certainly it's important to be informed. But what I want to say with Venus Mars, never doubt the ways that you can make a difference by showing up to do what it is that you do. If you can create a melody that for two minutes and 42 seconds out of someone's day provides them a little bit less sorrow or a little bit more joy, is that not a worthwhile pursuit? If you can write a poem that for 11 seconds makes someone feel slightly less alone, is that not a worthwhile pursuit? You could film a YouTube video that for 20 minutes takes people out of what it is that they are wrestling with, is that not a worthwhile pursuit. Do not doubt how much big things you can accomplish by showing up for the little things. We're building to a Virgo full moon after all. And I say this because I don't want us to get into this very apathetic, hopeless energy. With Pluto and Aquarius, I know it can feel hopeless. It can feel like the entire world is going down the garbage chute. It can feel like that. I totally get that. But what's important is that you keep that spark, that passion, that heart alive. You need it, that lust for life that keeps you going, and other people can need it as well. And even if it's not changing the world overnight, do not doubt that these things can make a difference, that they can make an impact. And within an Aquarius, it can whisper to you in a weird way. The things that you're passionate about are not random. It's the universe whispering where it is that you can do the most good and have the most impact, even if it's weird, even if it's odd, even if it's not the traditional vehicles of fundraising and altruism, there can be other ways that you can help people, that you could support people, that you can help move us into the future with Pluto also in Aquarius. So I just want to say with Venus and Mars, do not discount your passion. Those are fuel, my love. And those are transmissions from the universe signaling this direction. This is for you. This is why we created you in the way that we did for you to have this impact, chisel this potential to create this ease of suffering. But you will not get the opportunity to unlock that potential if you give up on life. If you feel like, well, it's all over for me. There's no point of even trying. You must keep that passion alive whether there's people watching your art or not watching your art, whether you're in your dream career or you're still in the certification process, do something that makes your heart happy on Wednesday. This is fuel. It keeps yourself sustained and it can even sustain other people as well if they're feeling bleak or they're feeling hopeless. So do not discount what it is that you're passionate about and what it is that you want in life. But with that being said, like I said, people are people. They are not tools to get what it is that you want, okay? People and their affection for you and their love for you are not tools to get what it is that you want. This energy just could be this energy around, I want this job so bad and oh look, my friend happens to work there. Let me just use them as a pawn to get what it is that I want. People are people. They are not tools to get to what it is that you want. So just always important to be respectful, even if you're passionate, even if you're fired up about getting to a certain cause. Yes, teamwork and collaboration can be helpful, but there needs to be this reciprocal back and forth because truly you only get what you give. So on the 21st, we have that passionate energy building in the evening time. Again, it's an Aquarius. So the passion might be coming through in more analytical ways and in more intellectual ways in weirder ways, what have you. But that's not the only passionate energy that is building. As the moon enters Leo at 5.40 a.m. and it essentially activates the Aquarius stellium by opposing Pluto in the morning time and then opposing the Venus-Mars conjunction in the evening time. And so with this energy, we can be feeling a little bit more dialed up. Keep in mind, we have the full moon building over the weekend. So we're feeling things a little bit more intensely. We could be a little bit more Dramatic. We could stub our toe and faint dramatically for our audience viewers in the movie of our life. We can be feeling things more intensely and with the opposition to Pluto, you could be feeling this 
indiscernible sense of dread that you can't place. Ugh, I hate that feeling when you're just feeling so dreadful and so nervous and so anxious, but you can't exactly place it. You're like, is it because I watched that video on AI this morning and it freaked me out? Is it because I'm worried that my neighbor's cat might've got out? Like, where is this feeling of dread coming from? Like with the energy of moon opposing Pluto, you might not be able to exactly sort out why it is that you're feeling this sort of way. And I know this is my typical advice, but I do need to highlight it here. Please make sure to move your body, ground down, get into your physical body because of all of the cosmos in Aquarius and the sun in Pisces. Let me tell you something, as an Aquarius Pisces girly myself, we are not totally here. Okay, these are the final two signs of the zodiac. We are elsewhere. We retreat into our own inner world. We have our own inner landscape. With so much of the cosmos and Aquarius and Pisces, we could just be somewhere else. We're just kind of in outer space. And so it's important to be anchoring into your physical body to remind yourself, okay, right here, right now, let me deal with what's in front of me. Let me help myself mitigate and calm myself down if I'm feeling nervous or feeling dreadful over something. It's important to highlight with the moon and leaves Leo. The moon in Leo is about creation. It's about shining out our own light. Even if you don't do anything with that artwork, that artwork was a celebration of being alive at this particular moment. Even if no one is viewing your art right now, I do not want you to feel that it does not have value. If that piece of art is a genuine reflection of how it is that you feel at that moment or what it's like to be you, then that is the aim. That is the win. That is a celebration of the present moment. That is a celebration of life itself. To be corny, you can't spell heart without art. Okay, the best art has your heart interwoven into it and so definitely a great day to create and really get into the heart of the matter that evening time definitely could be more passionate like i said about venus mars okay people could be hitting on you all sorts of crazy ways i would definitely imagine some of you out there are going to get some wild dms okay because with venus mars like i said this could be quite the seductive energy and with the energy of aquarius trying to seduce you through the internet okay trying to slide in your dms trying to swipe whichever way you're meant to swipe on dating apps trying to get you with some wit or with some knowledge all i'm saying is be mindful okay but with this evening definitely could be passionate especially with the moon opposing venus and mars but that passion could ignite in romantic ways, but also in the sort of ways where you pick a fight with a partner just because you want to make up. Like it's important with Venus being love and Mars being war, we can be more fired up. We could be a little bit more easily triggered with our partner. We could want to fight with our partner so that it proves to us that they still care about us. It's nice to feel passionate within connections, but tune into if there's an angry part of you that really just wants to feel loved and is going about it via being a little bit more triggered or aggressive or on the offense. On Thursday, February 22nd, as I highlighted, we are building to a Virgo full moon early on Saturday morning. And so just knowing as that full moon gets bigger and bigger and bigger in the night sky, that your emotions may swell as well. And it does feel like on Thursday, there can be some unexpected plot twists to a situation. Again, this showed up within the vibe check around don't you work here when all of a sudden you start to feel like, ooh, this night is taking a different turn than I thought it was. You could feel that at work, something unexpected could happen. Your emotions can be quite volatile. It can be quite up and down. And again, the Leo moon also squares Jupiter. So you're feeling things more intensely. We're building to a full moon, so everything's enhanced. And like I was saying a little bit with the day prior, sometimes people will be on the offense and be more vicious and more triggered when inwardly they just want love. That's how it is that they think that they need to act in order to get love. They need to pick a fight with you so that you fight for them. And they feel love. Sometimes random rude people at the supermarket are just being rude because they feel like any attention is good attention because they feel so ignored. I'm not saying you have to go above and beyond empathizing with every single soul that you possibly encounter, although you probably will do that as it is Pisces season. But what I want to say is that deep down, all of us just want to feel seen. All of us just want to feel loved. All of us just want to feel accepted. There's a lot of wisdom in hurt people hurt people. And I'm not saying you need to let people walk all over you. I'm not saying you have to absorb everyone's red Gatorade. But typically if somebody is slinging poison your way, that indicates there's a lot of it that exists within them. 
And I feel like that's important to highlight because the Leo moon trines Chiron. And whenever we have Chiron energy within the cosmos, there is a sting. It's like, I'm out, that person was so rude to me at the supermarket, but it can be healing to just take into account around that has nothing to do with me. Because so few things in life have anything to do with you personally, truly, honestly. Everybody is absorbed in their own movie, okay? Everybody is the protagonist in their own movie. They're not thinking about you as much as you think that they are. And when you can acknowledge that the ways that people treat you, especially if you had nothing to do to deserve that, is a reflection of the poison that exists within them and not something that you did, that's the moment you free yourself. And the moment that you can feel badly for somebody around God, Gosh, I'm so sad that you have so much poison within your soul that you just need to sling it to random people in the supermarket. The moment you can acknowledge that without allowing yourself to take it on, that's healing as well. We're all very impressionable this Pisces season. You could be picking up on all sorts of intuitive hits, but not everything is yours to fix or to solve. This access Virgo Pisces that we're building towards over the weekend and that I have within my birth chart, Oftentimes this, also sometimes it's used in reference to the 6th house and 12th house, but alas, it's often referred to as the serve or suffer axis. And it's not that my Virgo Pisces or my 6th house, 12th house, or those who have both within their chart, <laughs> not naming any names, but a certain astrologer whose birthday this week may or may not have that going on in her chart. But when it comes to this axis, I'm not saying that you are here to suffer. That's not it at all. Basically saying that these are energies that are here to be able to help that if it is a life where you do not feel like you are being of service and being able to take your experiences and your kindness and your service and put it towards something bigger than yourself, you will suffer because it will feel meaningless. There's a deep desire to be genuinely of service, but not every problem is yours to solve. Not everybody is here to be fixed, okay? That's why Virgo Pisces are constantly entering into relationships as projects around, I can fix them, I swear, I swear, I swear. Again, that's a misuse of your compassion and your empathy to put it towards Jeremy, who's on his fifth DUI, rather than working on your passion project. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little harsh. I told you, Venus Mars, we could be a little bit more fired up today. But seriously, these signs or house placements, whatever it is that you want to consider, they do have this genuine desire to be of service, to help people. But you are going to severely limit the amount of impact that you can have if you try to take on everybody who is hurting or is in need of help. You could sit there with your with this guy at the supermarket who just cursed you out and really try to go, go deep and talk to them about their problems, but not everything is yours to solve. That's why it's important to tune into where the universe is guiding you, where it is nudging you. That's where you can do the most good. Listen, I have been down that path. I could tell stories. We would be here all day, but we don't have time for that. Magic Monday is long enough. But what I will say is that within my experience and what I've observed within my clients, a lot of times those who are natural healers, those who are natural helpers, those who have a strong desire to want to serve, to want to ease the sufferings of others, oftentimes they will go through a period of life in which they misuse that God-given ability. That's what I believe, the God-given ability to be able to do that for others. Oftentimes it'll be misused on people who are not even wanting to help themselves rather than this God-given gift of empathy and compassion and healing being funneled to the collective people who genuinely want to heal and change and grow, it's being funneled to Jeremy, who is pretty consistently showing you who it is that he is. You cannot do push-ups for other people. You cannot care more than other people do. You cannot force someone to get sober. You cannot force someone to fix their life. You cannot force someone to want themselves to get better. And it's a misuse of your abilities, trying to fix, trying to save. Oh, but they need me. Oh, they have nobody else. A harsh truth that I had to face within my journey, because I think part of this Virgo full moon is harsh truths that in turn set us free with the trying to Jupiter. But a harsh truth that I had to take on was realizing I'm actually not helping these people at all. I'm actually hindering them because I am you know, fixing their wings when they fall, I'm taking them back, I'm giving them all this unconditional love, and it's not propelling them towards growth. They know they have this safe harbor with me. They know that I'll love them as they are, so they have no impetus to want to get better for themselves. They know I'll be there to clean up the messes, so it gives them the space to be able to be the mess. 
It's not doing them any good. The love and devotion that I was giving was coming from a pure place, perhaps directed towards the wrong person or people. It was meant to be directed towards this. <laughs> now all of that empathy and love and compassion that I used to pour into these challenging relationships that I had, I put it into my business and I put it into my YouTube channel and I put it towards people who genuinely take the information that I share or the empathy that I extend or the understanding that I extend and genuinely value it. They don't just treat me like a doormat, taking my empathy and my compassion for granted, they value it. And so it doesn't say anything about you if you are pouring your love and compassion and empathy to somebody who is not valuing it. It's simply being directed at the wrong person or the wrong thing. Because I feel like it's very natural when you do have this desire to want to help and to want to ease people's suffering and that you feel things deeply and you don't want people to hurt. It's natural to want to fix all of the broken birds that you come in contact with, but you've got to stay focused. You cannot save people. You cannot fix people who do not want to be saved or fixed. So just being mindful with Pisces season or psychic antennas dialed in, you could be really, really dialed into this person at the supermarket who's screaming at you and wondering, what went wrong in your life that you have to scream at me and do you need to talk about it? But not your circus, not your monkeys. Not everybody needs to be fixed or saved by you. You've got to stay focused to where it is that you can have the most impact. And what I will say that I've observed and my clients have observed with connections like the one that I was talking about is that oftentimes they could take advantage of that giving nature of yours around, wow, you're going to walk away like everybody else do. They're going to play on that desire within you to want to help them. They're going to play on your good nature. There's people like that out there. And it's so important to know that. And they will want to be parasites for the love and care that you exude, taking and taking and taking. Givers must have limits because takers have none. And you have to acknowledge at a certain point and look the truth square in the face around, after all of these chances, after all of this compassion, after all of this understanding, after all of this cleaning up of the messes, have we progressed? Have we moved forward or are we just stuck in this chaotic loop? Sometimes you just gotta cut your losses. You cannot care about somebody's well-being more than they care. Your heart might be in the right place, but the love and compassion might be directed at the wrong person. So just important to be discerning of that. But to a practical level, there can be things that are unexpected. People are more fired up, okay? They're more likely to pop off. They might be driving faster. People are more desirous, as I highlighted. With the square to Jupiter and Uranus, there might be a couple of things that are kind of like a record scratch moment, like, huh? You might be less motivated. Okay, that's the energy with Moon squaring Jupiter and also Venus squares Jupiter on Saturday. So you could be feeling less motivated, but more blah, not in the mood, but more in the mood to procrastinate or online shop rather than do work. And then that evening, at 11.29 p.m., Mercury enters its fall of Pisces. So like I said, it's not comfy here. It's underwater. Our thoughts could feel like they're underwater. It could be harder to communicate. It's harder to get from point A to point B because Mercury in Pisces is answering to Jupiter. So it's seeing the bigger picture where you're trying to tell a story about this person who cussed you out at the supermarket and you keep taking all of these detours. Again, it's getting to the same point, but it's subtext. It's a movie scene. Literally, you're setting the scene. You're like, I can't just tell you what happened with this man at the supermarket because I also need to tell you that I saw him in the supermarket and he had a weird look on his face and he was driving a Buick. It was a gray Buick at that, just like that one that my ex from high school had. Yeah, it was just like that one. And we were at the grocery store that's right by the ice cream parlor that you and I used to go to every Tuesday. That was so much fun. We should do that again. And then he got out of the car. He's wearing those work boots and they were stomping so loud that I literally thought that somebody was knocking on a door. Like they're giving you all the sub chucks. They're setting the scene and you're like, are we going to arrive to the point? <laughs> Or are you just setting a scene of a man walking through the parking lot for no reason? And another manifestation, because keep in mind, Mercury is about the details and the facts and the figures. Would you, be you trying to recount that story of the man at the supermarket and not being able to remember what he said, being like, he said something mean, but I don't remember. I was so busy with the emotional subtext I was taking in. I wasn't paying attention to the actual words being said. So you are asking questions about this incident and you're like, well, it depends on what this person said to you. Like, what did this individual say to you? How did they insult you? But with Mercury and Pisces, you can find like it's harder to put the words or remember the words because you're so tapped into how it felt to how it felt to receive that at the time. And other manifestations of this, just with Mercury and Pisces, you could just feel like your head is underwater. You could feel like you're in your own world. Definitely important to read the labels. Okay, know what you're getting into. It might look like a rose drink. There's some other fruits involved. 
<laughs> and with Mercury and Pisces, it's important to use discernment, right? And really pay attention to the details as that's not always this placement's strong suit. And like I said, sometimes words can be used to deceive and sometimes words are used to deceive around outright lies. And sometimes those lies are given by omission, not giving necessary context to a situation. Just remembering that you work at that certain place and what a coincidence, I just put an application there. With Mercury and Pisces, be mindful who it is that you're trying to deceive. Energy reads energy, okay? Because with Mercury and Pisces, if we were to get literal with it in terms of definition, maybe Kate didn't lie. But with Mercury and Pisces, you felt the vibe. You felt the vibe. You knew that that was not something that she just thought of. All of a sudden, all the things that she kept in shadows around why she had asked you to go to the movies and why she was suddenly so curious in your life, all of a sudden that becomes clear and you got the whole thing figured out. She didn't have to say all of that, but you got it figured out. You used your emotional intelligence and you used intuition around, oh, that's why all of this was put into motion. And so it's just important around where it is that you are bending the truth, where it is that you are not being honest. And I do wanna highlight that after the moon squares Uranus, which again, might be a record scratch moment or something unexpected happening, some volatile emotions, technical difficulties, unexpected weather, Uranus energy, expect the unexpected energy. The moon will be void at 818, where it stays for a majority of Friday. So I would definitely advise you might be feeling restless on Thursday, but I would definitely say if there are some important matters, definitely strive to handle them earlier in the week as Friday doesn't feel very productive and we're before the full moon, so you just be feeling scattered all over the place. On Friday, February 23rd, the moon enters Virgo at 5.36 p.m. Now, if you remember from Thursday's forecast, the moon went void at 8.18. So that's a long void moon. Friday is not giving very productive, especially with the square to Uranus and us building to a full moon early on Saturday morning. You could just be feeling all over the place, more intense, more frenetic. I'm hoping, and I'm gonna send out this energy, that it's a good sort of volume up, that you're feeling things more intensely. Again, Virgo full moon, we're having the spotlight around where it is that we are helping, where it is that we are being of service, where it is that we're feeling good about our contributions. There could be an energy around being able to take in, dang, I did that, I enacted that boundary, I got that promotion, I created that artwork, whatever it is, having this moment of appreciating what it is that you've built, knowing that there's more to go with options to Saturn and the energy of Virgo to begin with, knowing that there's always something that you could improve on or a way that you could get better, but having a moment to be like, dang, I'm proud of myself. Dang, I am making a difference. Wow, this contribution is being seen and valued and honored. So I'm hoping you have that sort of culmination within your universe brewing, but you also could be feeling quite frantic. A lot of people might be asking a lot from you. Like I said, this is an axis that is about service and being of service. And it's important to highlight we're here to help others and we're here to help ease one another's suffering the way that we know how, whether that's through our art, through our altruism, through our conversation, whatever it is, it feels good to help others. That's such a happiness code, is when you are feeling down in the dumps, going out of your way to help somebody else, going out of your way to give back. It's truly an antidote. It fills you up with so many good feelings to feel that you are making a difference. Like I said, it's important to be discerning about where it is that we filter that sort of energy, but it feels good to help and to support others. But with that being said, we could be feeling a little bit frantic. Our energy could be spread a little thin, trying to be everything for everybody. A lot of people could be asking for our help and our assistance. We could be helping this person with this. We have this work project. We have to get this handled, we have to unpack here. There's just a lot going on. We could feel spread really thin and that overwhelmed energy can be pronounced with the nearly all day void moon closing aspect squared Uranus, where there's so much on your plate and there's so much people need from you that it's messing with your mind. You're more distracted. Keep in mind, Mercury is now in Pisces, so your head can feel underwater around, what did I mean to help Cynthia with? What do I have to do after work? Did I send that proposal? You could feel more scatterbrained and more distracted. When the moon enters Virgo at 536, maybe that helps a little bit, but then it's greeted by opposition to Mercury. So again, the devil's in the details and the details are underwater. <laughs>
<laughs> with Mercury in Pisces. There's a lot that's on your mind. There's a lot that's on your plate and you might be letting certain details fall by the wayside. So it's just important to stay grounded, make a list. Okay. It's a Virgo full moon. If you have a lot going on this weekend and try not to save it for later, you might feel tempted to do that because Venus squares Jupiter the next day, which could make us more laissez faire. It can make us want to procrastinate. There's a lot on our plate, but rather than doing the things, we're almost feeling so overwhelmed that it's easier to do nothing. <laughs> it's easier to just eat bonbons in bed rather than tackle our to-do list because our to-do list stress us out. And with Venus square Jupiter, we could just be more apt to want to do what's pleasurable, do what's enjoyable, leave it for later, leave it for later. One thing about later is that it does arrive. <laughs> it's a nearly all day void moon. Strive to take things in little bites so that you don't brush important details under the rug. And that scatterbrained energy is embodied by the Virgo moon opposing its ruler Mercury and Pisces where there's a lot we have to do. The try not to delude yourself into feeling like you'll do it later. Strive to take things on. And I do wanna let you know that the Virgo full moon does exact on Saturday. However, it happens so early on Saturday, you'll likely feel the major effects of it on Friday is when you'll you'll feel it building around. It could feel more hectic. It could feel more busy. It could feel more chaotic. The full moon always makes things feel more intense and frazzled. It makes so much sense that I was born on a full moon, truly. Frazzled should be my middle name. <laughs> Honestly, especially with this energy of Virgo, it could be a little bit neurotic, but deep breath, one step at a time, have your list, check it twice, stay focused at the task at hand. On Saturday, February 24th, happy full moon in Virgo. The full moon exacts at 4.30 a.m. PST, and it lands at five degrees Virgo. So you'll wanna see where within your chart you have five degrees Virgo to figure out which life arenas are being spotlighted with this Virgo full moon. And like I said, something's being spotlighted. It could be a good spotlight around, gosh, I really feel like I'm being of service my contributions feel good or a certain spotlight around wow I feel like my kindness has been taken for granted I feel like this client has not appreciated that I went above and beyond for them I feel like this friend did not appreciate that I went out of my way to help them out I feel like Jeremy did not appreciate that I took him back after he messed up again like sometimes with this energy there could be a culmination around where that service is feeling good and we're having intrinsic reward but also where it is that it's feeling not so good where we're feeling a little yucky about it we're feeling like our kindness or generosity or our desire to serve was taken advantage of that could be a spotlight that we are observing with this full moon it's just this delicate balance of the jupiter and the saturn because that's life as i highlighted i'm here in thailand and the circumstances around my trip it was very very last minute everything came into alignment in such a beautiful way but i will highlight i was apprehensive about traveling this month because i did have some really harsh saturn aspects this month saturn opposed my moon it conjoined my sun it squared my midheaven all back to back within the same week as I've been here in Thailand. And I remember talking to my best friend about it and I was like, I don't know if I should travel. I have this Saturn energy. And honestly, if I was looking at this energy with a client, I would probably tell them you're going to feel very depressed. Things are going to feel really hard. And my best friend told me something I'll never forget. He said, well, Haley, you could be depressed at home or you could be depressed in Thailand. I was like, all right. <laughs> I guess I'll go be depressed in Thailand then. And I definitely felt the Saturn energy, but I wasn't going to allow it to keep me from life. And there was honestly so much beauty in that Saturn because at the same time, because they're so close in degrees, Jupiter trined my moon right before I left. It trines my ascendant next week. It's like, yes, I had some harsh emotions. I have some really tough decisions to make. There's some stuff that's been weighing on me heavily. But with the trine to Jupiter, there's also so much beauty around me. Like the fact that I woke up today and got to walk to a fruit stand and have the most amazing fresh fruit juice made by the sweetest woman. Then I got to see a pack of monkeys yesterday and then I got to meet some beautiful souls on a boat and we talked about astrology for hours. Like there's been so much sweetness around me. There's a lot of heaviness certainly, but there's also so much sweetness. And even if your aspects that you're navigating with aren't the same as mine, I just feel like that's so life and that it typically isn't just all Jupiter, all Saturn. Typically, some of our happiest moments will have a sprinkle of the bad in it. And sometimes some of our most challenging moments will have some unexpected silver lining. And with this energy of the Virgo and the Pisces axis, it's about how it is that we can take the good with the bad or take the imperfection and the perfection of it all and define perfection within the imperfection, truly. What I think of when I think of Virgo Pisces is the difference between looking at artwork very close and looking at artwork far away. If you get really 
really close to a piece of art, you'll see all the small details that are off. Like that brush stroke was too much, that paint was chunky. But if you take a step back, you see it's all beautiful. It's all part of the art. And that's life as well. You could look at anything and find errors or ways that things could be better. But every so often you gotta take a step back and be like, well, it's all perfect even with the imperfections. Things are unfolding as they're meant to within my life. And even though that's messy and that should be better and these freaking hanger tags keep popping out of this shirt and it's driving me absolutely insane. That's the energy of the Virgo moon. The Pisces sun reminds you, my love, you are here on a rock, whizzing through space. You're here being a soul on this planet. When it's time for you to go, you're not gonna be worried about the hanger tags. <laughs> you're just not. And it's important to balance the two because if we get too into the Pisces energy, we'll be like, nothing matters, so why does it matter if I show up for work? It's a balance, my love, it's a balance. And so this full moon in Virgo is asking you where it is that you can balance and just take the good with the bad. Take the perfection with the imperfection. Take where it is that things go according to plan and where there's delightful deviations in the plan. Being able to be humble enough to show up to serve and to help others, but being able to be divine enough to remember that you are so much more than this vessel. You are so much more than this experience. It's about showing up and balancing the two. And so also on Saturday that evening, we have Venus squaring Jupiter. Now this was in the the vibe check around how Kate was just buttering you up, right? Not just the movie theater popcorn, but also with the flattery. Like with Venus square Jupiter, this could be love bomb energy. And with Mars involved, people could be trying to get something from you. They could be trying to get their way with you by using honey, by using sweetness, by using charm and flirting in order to get what it is that they want from you. With Venus square Jupiter, you could also be a little bit more lazy. You could be procrastinating more. You could be indulging more, eating more, drinking more, certainly loving more, spending more. The vibe is more, right? With Venus square Jupiter, we want all the good things. Keep in mind, with full moon energy, things typically feel a little frantic and it's a Virgo moon, so you might just want to escape out of your own mind. So you might be like eating to avoid the thoughts or drinking to avoid the thoughts. You might just want to shut it off because it's just a lot, all the thoughts that are going off. But with the energy of Venus square Jupiter, it's important to just celebrate life. There's never going to be a moment that's 100% perfect or 100% good, 100% bad. Just appreciate the moment for what it is <laughs> within the movie scene that is your life and keep it going. This feels like if you go out to dinner, it's the sort of meal where you have appetizers and entrees and oh, should we split this side and let's get drinks and dessert. We're in the mood to enjoy life, but with the square to Jupiter, we don't know how to say no. <laughs> Let me say that to the enjoyment of life. So important to be discerning of that. On Sunday, February 25th, the only aspects all day is that the Virgo moon will trine Uranus and oppose Neptune. So as we're recovering from the full moon, you could have a full moon hangover. You could have an actual hangover as we did have Venus square Jupiter the night before, which can make us prone for indulgence. But what I want to say is Virgo moon st steadies itself and settles itself through finding order. So if you're feeling a little nervous or kind of all over the place, it might be helpful to clean or to unpack or to organize something like grounding down into your physical environment can make you feel a little bit more settled or a little bit more grounded, especially if the Virgo full moon did bring up some more intense emotions for you. Would also be a great day to work out, to do something to move some energy is what I wanna say with the Virgo moon training Uranus. And then after you clean or you work or you do something productive that evening, it might be nice to just escape into your own world. It's Pisces season after all. And the Virgo moon opposes Neptune. So get lost in an album, get lost in a movie. One other event that does happen on the 25th is that it is my solar return. It is my birthday. Thank you so much for your birthday wishes last week. I'm so sorry I was not clear. I'm here in Thailand for my birthday, but my birthday was not last week. It is this Sunday, the 25th. I'm big on birthdays. I think most astrologers are. We work with birthdays. We understand how sacred it is the day that you came into existence and how precious this time that we've been given on this planet is and to just savor it for what it is worth. And I just want to say one of the sweetest gifts within the rotations around the sun that I've been lucky enough to have has been the individuals that I've been able to connect with via doing this work and having this YouTube channel. So I just want to thank you so much for being here. It just feeds my soul to such a deep intrinsic level to know that I've made even a modicum of difference within your journey. That's the sweetest gift that I could ever receive, birthday or not. That is the sweetest gift to know that in some way within this language of astrology, within the way that I show up and however it is that I do what it is that I do, to know in some way I have 
ease the suffering of others or made you smile or made you feel seen or made you feel understood or made you feel understood within the wacky astrology that we're navigating. To know that, that is the sweetest gift. And that's the crux of the Virgo full moon that I want to communicate. Do not feel that those who have taken advantage of your kindness or taken for granted what it is that you have to give, do not feel that that makes what it is that you have to give any less valuable. It was just targeted towards the wrong audience or towards the wrong thing or towards the wrong person. It does not take away from the value of who it is that you are and what it is that you have to give. And when you are directing that loving, compassionate, service-oriented energy towards the right cause, towards the right community, towards the right why, towards the right passion project, nothing will feed your soul more than knowing that it's making a difference for individuals. And if you've been in a place in your life or maybe you're currently there, where you feel like you have poured in and poured in and poured in to people or to groups of people or whatever it is, where you just feel like that kindness was chewed up and spat out. I just want you to know that says nothing about the value of who it is that you are and what it is that you have to give this planet. You could have just been directing that energy towards the wrong outlet. <laughs> And I've been there, my love, and I just don't want you to internalize it and feel like you are not worthy or that you don't have something valuable to give or to share because you do. There could just be a need to direct all of that energy that you've been giving in this situation that's been taking advantage of you and direct it into your art or into a cause or into community. There could be something bigger that is calling for all of that energy that you're pouring into these dead ends or into these takers. If anyone's in a dead end situation, do not feel like the car is broken just because you're on a dead end, okay? You might just not be meant to progress <laughs> on that street. Back up and find your highway, my love. You can get there way faster that way. But I just wanna say thank you so much for all the birthday wishes last week. I feel so grateful. You all are the greatest present of all. So my loves, that is our week. The Magic Monday mantra of the week is, I am open to give, I am open to receive. It's important to highlight that yes, the axis of this Virgo full moon, the moon in Virgo, the sun in Pisces, it deals heavily with service. Virgo in more so of a physical sense and Pisces more so in a spiritual sense. And like we've been talking about a lot, there's so much intrinsic joy in the act of giving. There's so much sweetness that life beholds when we focus more so on what it is that we can give rather than what it is that we can receive. But it's also important with this full moon opposing Saturn that we confront the limitations of life, that we can only give so much of our time and so much of our energy. And giving our time and energy to this cause, if it's a lost cause, is derailing it from giving it to a cause in which it could truly be of value, in which it could truly be valued and honored and received. Because when we talk about being of service and pouring into people, somebody who does not want to help themselves will not be able to accept your help or your support or even your love for that matter. Then you only have so much to give. And sometimes you have to get real around where can I do the most good? Because I've been pouring into this situation for the last couple of years and this person is not showing any improvements. And I'm putting myself in a martyr role, constantly going above and beyond for this person who it feels like I care about their well-being more than they do. Cancel, cancel. I have to get real with myself and focus on where I can give and receive. Because it's not just about receiving gifts and receiving love. It's also about receiving that moment around the energy of pride of a job well done. When you meet with a client and they email you after and say, oh my goodness, that session changed my life. You have no idea the profound ripple effects that I had. Like receiving that moment, not just running to the next task, really having that moment to check in with yourself, just feel proud around, wow, it feels good to be able to have some sort of contribution. Or if you work at an ice cream stand and a dad comes in with his kid and you scoop them both a scoop of ice cream and you just feel into that moment around how you're literally scooping them joy and you're part of this sweet memory that this child will probably look back on the day that dad took me to go get mint chocolate chip ice cream. Like really feeling my effort, my scooping of that ice cream led to this beautiful moment that I got to bear witness to and receiving that just really 
basking in how good it can feel to give. Or if you volunteer at a soup kitchen, really feeling and soaking in the thank yous as they are offered. This is all receiving. But it's just important not to give into environments where people do not have the capacity to receive. It's such a misuse of your talents, of your abilities, of the love that you have to share when you are giving and giving and giving to people or places that do not have the capacity to receive. Because to bring it back to the Kate situation, sure, she was receiving plenty, she was receiving the clothes and receiving the favors, but she was not really receiving in a grateful way with an open heart. It was getting, it was what can I get from you? It was not how it is that I can give and receive. It's Pisces season and it's a dance between the giving and the receiving. And you have to be discerning where you are pouring into situations where you're observing. There's not a dance here. There's not a give or receive. It feels like the more I give, to you the more you parasitically pull from me like it's important to tune into where it is that you can have the most impact where you can give the most in places where it is able to be received and where it is able to be poured back into you and that's what my birthday rant was all about is because I feel so blessed that I've cultivated a community who pours into me just as much as I pour out to them after many years of feeling taken advantage of it's so beautiful to feel valued and to feel that beautiful dance of the giving and the receiving we're all here walking one another home. We're all here helping one another. And I just feel so grateful to be on this journey with you all. What a sweet birthday this has been. I can't wait to share more in Thailand. Editing Healy here. Please excuse the brief interruption. Coming to you live from the jungle Airbnb. If you can hear the animal noises. Also check out this lizard that was on my wall yesterday. But that is not why I am popping in. I'm popping in because I didn't, while filming, set an emoji of the week if you made it to the end, which we need to have one because it's a milestone to make to, to the end of these videos. They're pretty long. So if you made it to the end of the video, go ahead and let me know by dropping the birthday cake emoji or using the word birthday within a sentence. Okay, love you all. Have a great week. My Instagram handle is at Healy Comet Astrology. My TikTok is the same. I would love to connect with you over there. And until we meet again, drink lots of water and stay cosmic.